Hurricanes are basically tropical revolving storms with sustained winds of at least 64 knots. They form in deep ocean waters of at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The Atlantic hurricane season, for example, is from June 1st to November 30th, peaking in mid-September when tropical waters are warmest. However, hurricanes sometimes form out of season. As trade winds blow hurricanes westward, the storms absorb heat from the warm ocean surface and intensify. Hurricanes can wreak havoc on anything in their path for hundreds of miles. The cardinal rule of hurricane avoidance is to get as far away as possible from the path of the storm. On land, this is simply a matter of timely evacuation as directed by local government officials. At sea, mariners need to monitor the weather and promptly maneuver their ship away from these dangerous storms. Considering that most shipping routes pass through tropical waters and climate change evidently exacerbating global ocean warming, it's very likely that one day your ship will be in the vicinity of a hurricane. In this video, we'll explore three different methods for hurricane avoidance, relative motion plot, the one, two, three rule, and buys ballots law. Relative motion plot is best used when the ship is within the storm circulation. It computes the course to steer for maximum CPA distance. This method requires reliable hurricane tracking information to construct the vectors. The latest tropical cyclone forecast or advisory is often the best source for storm location, direction of movement, speed, atmospheric pressure, and more. The relative motion plot method can also be used to solve exam questions on hurricane avoidance. We'll use the following U.S. Coast Guard exam question to determine, step by step, the course to steer for the farthest distance from the storm. You are underway on course 050 degrees true, and your maximum speed is 10 knots. The eye of the hurricane bears 100 degrees true, 90 miles from your position. The hurricane is moving towards 285 degrees true at 19 knots. What course should you steer at 10 knots to have the maximum CPA? Tools you'll need for plotting this demonstration are maneuvering board or compass rows, pencil or pen, triangles, parallel rules, or any instrument to draw parallel lines, and a pair of compasses or dividers. Label the center of the maneuvering board or compass rows, E, to represent your vessel. Plot the position of the hurricane bearing 100 degrees at 90 miles from the center. Label it H. Note, use the largest scale possible. For hurricane avoidance problems on U.S. Coast Guard exams, a scale of 10 to 1 for distance and 3 to 1 for speed throughout the solution often work best. Draw a vector from E in the direction of 285 degrees to represent the hurricane track and speed of 19 knots. Label the tip of the vector M. Draw a circle with radius of 10 knots around E to represent your ship's speed. Draw a line from M tangent to the side of the speed circle that's opposite the path of the hurricane. Remember the hurricane is heading 285 degrees true. To determine course to steer for maximum CPA, draw a line from E perpendicular to the tangent line. Label the point of intersection R. Vector ER represents the course to steer at 10 knots that will result in the maximum CPA, in this case 226 degrees true. The answer to our exam question is bravo. To determine CPA distance, draw a line that is parallel to RM the relative motion vector from the hurricane past the center of the maneuvering board. This is the relative motion line the hurricane will follow. Label the line RML. Next, extend the perpendicular line from E in the opposite direction to intersect RML. Label the point of intersection CPA. The distance from E to CPA, or 54 nautical miles, is the closest distance the hurricane will pass. To compute TCPA, the time the hurricane will be at CPA, divide the distance from H to the CPA by the relative speed of the hurricane. The distance of about 73 nautical miles divided by a relative speed of 16.4 knots is approximately 4 hours and 27 minutes. Note, 
the accuracy of the relative motion plot is contingent upon directions and speeds remaining constant. The 1-2-3 rule can be used when the ship is well outside the storm's circulation area. To provide an even better safety margin, the 1-2-3 rule can be combined with the 34-knot wind radius rule. This method also requires relatively reliable storm tracking information. As such, we'll use the Hurricane Irma Advisory, issued Thursday, August 31, 2017, at 1500 UTC for our demonstration. The storm was near 16.9 degrees north, 33.8 degrees west. Plot the position of the storm center for the date and time the latest advisory was issued. Draw a circle around the storm center with a radius of 70 nautical miles to represent the maximum 34 knot wind distance. Note, gale force winds, according to the National Weather Service, are sustained surface winds of 34 to 47 knots. Sustained surface winds of 34 knots are significant because they can produce seas that severely compromise the ship's ability to maneuver, which is a necessity for storm avoidance. The 34-knot rule recommends mariners avoid the storm's 34-knot wind field. Notably, wind speed and resulting seas are not consistent throughout the storm circulation area. Storm advisories give the extent of wind field from the storm center in four quadrants. At 1500 UTC, for example, 34-knot winds could be expected anywhere from the storm center northeast to 70 nautical miles, southeast to 50 nautical miles, southwest to 40 nautical miles, and northwest to 60 nautical miles. To ensure the highest safety margin, we use the maximum distance given for 34-knot winds in the four quadrants, or 70 nautical miles. Plot the storm position and respective maximum 34-knot wind radii for the 24-hour, 48-hour, and 72-hour forecasts. To apply the 1-2-3 rule for storm avoidance to the position forecast, increase the 24-hour wind radius by 100 nautical miles, the 48-hour wind radius by 200 nautical miles, and the 72-hour wind radius by 300 nautical miles. Note, the 1-2-3 rule is based on the National Weather Service latest 10-year average tropical cyclone forecast errors in the North Atlantic. The error is approximately 100 nautical miles for 24 hours, 200 nautical miles for 48 hours, and 300 nautical miles for 72 hours. Draw one tangent to connect the top of each circle and another to connect the bottoms. The enclosed area is considered dangerous and should be avoided. Note, the Mariner's Guide for Hurricane Awareness in the North Atlantic Basin, a handout from the National Weather Service, contains a wealth of helpful information for mariners. Buys Ballot's Law, based on fundamental meteorological principles, can be used when a mariner doesn't have access to current weather reports at sea or to cross-check weather information received. This method estimates the direction of the storm's center from an observer and provides general steps for steering the ship away from the storm. Before we explain Buys Ballot's Law, Let's briefly summarize some of the principles involved. A warm ocean surface heats the air. The warm, moist air rises, leaving behind a low pressure area. Air flows in from high pressure areas to fill it, creating wind. Earth's oblate spheroid shape and west to east rotation result in moving fluids such as wind deflecting to the right in the northern hemisphere and to the left in the southern hemisphere. This deflection, called the Coriolis effect, causes storms to rotate counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. Moreover, trade winds steer these rotating storms in a westerly direction. For the purpose of storm avoidance, a rotating storm can be divided into two halves relative to its direction of movement, the dangerous semicircle and the navigable semicircle. In the northern hemisphere, the dangerous semicircle is the side of the storms to the right of the path. In this section, the forward motion of the storm increases wind strength, resulting in higher seas. Worst of all, the direction of the wind and seas in the forward part of the dangerous semicircle tends to push ships into the path of the storm. Conversely, the navigable semicircle is the side of the storm left of its path. In this semicircle, the forward motion of the storm decreases wind strength 
resulting in lower seas. Even better, wind and sea direction in the forward part of the navigable semicircle tend to push ships away from the path of the storm. In the southern hemisphere, the dangerous semicircle is left of the storm path, while the navigable semicircle is to the right. Now that we've covered some basic storm characteristics, we can proceed with storm avoidance strategies. The first step is to estimate the direction of the storm center from the observer. This is best done using Bayes Ballot's Law, which states that if an observer in the northern hemisphere faces away from the surface wind, the low pressure will be to the left and the high pressure to the right. However, due to the Coriolis effect, causing wind to deflect to the right, the low pressure could be within 45 degrees forward of the observer and the high pressure within 45 degrees aft of the observer. In the southern hemisphere, of course, it's the exact opposite. The second step, if the ship is within the storm's circulation area, is to determine the ship's location relative to the storm center. For the purpose of storm avoidance, instructions for steering the ship to safer waters are based on four locations. Dangerous semicircle, navigable semicircle, on storm path ahead, on storm path behind. The American practical navigator, often referred to as Bowditch, summarizes some general rules for evading tropical revolving storms depending on the relative position of the storm center. For example, dangerous semicircle. In the northern hemisphere, if the wind veers or shifts to the right, the ship is most likely in the dangerous semicircle. Maneuver as necessary to keep the wind on the starboard bow, about 45 degrees relative, and increase speed as much as possible. If you must stop for any reason, be sure to face the bow of the ship into the seas. Navigable semicircle. If the wind steadily backs or shifts to the left, the ship is most likely in the navigable semicircle. Thus, maneuver as necessary to keep the wind on the starboard quarter, about 135 degrees relative, and increase speed as much as possible. If you have to stop, face the stern of the ship into the seas. On storm path, ahead of storm center. If the wind direction is steady or nearly steady, with decreasing atmospheric pressure, the ship is most likely on the storm path and ahead of the storm center. In the northern hemisphere, maneuver as necessary to keep the wind on the starboard quarter, about 160 degrees relative, and increase speed as much as possible. When the ship is in the navigable semicircle proper, put the wind at about 135 degrees relative. Continue making as much way as possible. On storm path, behind storm center. If the wind direction is steady or nearly steady, with increasing atmospheric pressure, the ship is most likely on the storm path behind the storm center. Continue the course that results in increasing atmospheric pressure. Tropical revolving storms with winds of 64 knots or greater form in oceans around the world. However, their names vary depending on where they are developed. In the North Atlantic and Eastern Pacific, they are called hurricanes. In the Western Pacific, typhoons. In the North Indian Ocean, cyclones. These storms may even have local names, for example, Baguio in the Philippines. The National Hurricane Center uses the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale to rate strength and potential destruction. This scale divides hurricanes into five categories based only on maximum sustained wind speed. Hazardous weather phenomena such as storm surge flooding, torrential rains, rip currents, and tornadoes that exacerbate destructive hurricane forces are not factored into the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale. Hurricane Katrina, for example, the costliest U.S. hurricane to date, with damages well above $108 billion, had already been downgraded to Category 3 when it struck southeast Louisiana and Mississippi on the morning of August 29, 2005. The ever-changing state of meteorological elements and their interaction at sea can sometimes challenge even the most sophisticated storm data forecast models. Thus, mariners must remember that hurricanes sometimes behave differently than forecast. Case in point, in late September 2015, in the Atlantic Ocean near the Bahamas, Hurricane Joaquin was persistently predicted to travel northwest or west. Instead, the hurricane headed in a southwesterly direction, strengthened, and grew faster than forecasted. Unfortunately, the El Faro, a roll-on, roll-off cargo vessel, 
sailed directly into Joaquin's path and sank. All 33 lives on board were lost. The National Transportation Safety Board determined that the probable cause of the accident was the captain's insufficient action to avoid Hurricane Joaquin, as well as his failure to use the most current weather information. All things considered, mariners must use all available means such as radars, presence of a long swell, cirrus clouds, rapid change in atmospheric pressure, direction of wind shift and intensity, and sea state, coupled with fundamental meteorological principles to assess local conditions and cross-check weather reports, especially when operating in or around an active storm.